I have a home studio. A lot of people I know, I know Rebecca has a home studio. Everyone, it's like, there are ways to get it done, get the quality of the majors with minimal dollars. And, that, and I have this saying that I always say that um, I've, I've always have to figure out ways to maximize moments with minimal dollars. Get the best out of everything that um, you can without having to spend your life savings to get it done. So that's kind of like my motto in everything. Um, I guess the biggest thing is, is that there are so many different topics I guess we could talk about that I know I could talk about, which range from production, which range from touring, which, ra which range from um, multiple streams of income. And I definitely will say this, I feel like the, the, the topic of multiple streams of income is definitely something that we will will visit sometime in the conversation because uh, there are a lot of musicians that have been hurt financially through this, uh, but there is a way to find positive in this negative world in Pac-Man. And like for instance, with me, my income, uh, I lost a lot of money touring, but that was not my bread and butter. So I had my hands in other things, which allowed me to keep income coming in. And if you just handle your business right, you'll be okay. Uh, and, and it's not too late to do certain things to, um, and to bring in those multiple streams without having to worry about the, um, the concerns of a gig. So, so I guess uh, I feel like maybe the best thing to do is instead of me just going off on a tangent, is address what you want to talk about. So if you have a question, just put it out there. We can go from there. Anyone have any questions? No, oh, okay, okay. So I'm, I'm, I've been using DistroKid. What, what are your th thoughts about DistroKid for licensing? Is it to, it's, should I, should I start working with a better um, person to license stuff? Um, what type of license? I'm not familiar with them. So what type of licensing? Distro, distro kid. Um, they allow you to, to um, uh, post up on iTunes, Amazon, Spotify. They're, they're pretty much do the whole blanket uh, licensing agreement for you. Um, stuff like that. Um, so basically when you say licensing is mainly taking other people's music, they'll go through do the licensings for you and put it out there? No, no, my, I, I only put up my own, my own originals. So I've, you know, I've got my stuff copywritten. I've got, I'm with BMI. Then I put my, um, uh, I've, I've got a, um, I, a John, John knows my publisher, um, uh, Ed Kirk. And then um, um, he does the, the publishing, but I've been using DistroKid to get my music out up there. Um, of course, the streaming doesn't pay anything. Most of my revenue comes from okay. YouTube. Most, but gotcha. you know, I, I'm having some situations with some stuff that I wrote with other, um, co you know, collaborations, and um, it's anyway. So I, just, I, just, I don't know, you know, how you use a blanket okay. like for all your material, you know, a TuneCore or a BM, uh, BMG, because you know, right. I, I know you said you do have your own, right. So let me ask you this question. Um, well, let me say this. I'll, I'll tell you my experience and you can just compare it to what you have. Sure. Okay. So with my, um, right now I am in the process of possibly switching um, to a more national um, uh, distributor. Right. Uh, there's only so much money that you're going to get in through CD Baby, TuneCore, DistroKit, and the rest of them. There's, honestly speaking, you're probably going to get the lowest form of royalty payout from exactly. them. Um, I'm actually working uh, with a new company. Uh, we're on hold now because of the fact that of COVID-19, so they're not really negotiating new deals, but we're coming back to the table in a, another month or so to talk about that. Well, uh, I use CD Baby, all right? Uh, a very good friend of mine, he was, I don't want to call his name because I don't know if he'd be comfortable with me telling his business, but I will say this. Yeah. But I will say this. He is a major, major, major uh, artist, and he literally just turned away from the universals and 
now he's using TuneCore. Right. You know, so you're talking about a guy that's worth millions using TuneCore. <laughs> so to get his music out there. Well, for me, CD Baby works well. I like CD Baby over TuneCore and various ones. One, because legacy is very important for me when it comes down to, um, to my music. So at the end of the day, you know, with CD Baby, CD Baby has a deal where you pay them once and your music is on there for the life of the yes, project. Sir. Yeah. Right. So with that being said, so just say if you have an album, you spend 50 bucks, your album is out there for the life of that project. You, you create this music, you get it out there, CD Baby takes it, take that one time fee, it's out there. It hits the Spotify, it hits Sound Exchange, it hits uh, it hit Spotify, all of the majors, iHearts, all those things. So iTunes, which is key, which is key for pretty much everything. Google, uh, Google uh, Play, Amazon Music, right? Uh, hell, uh, Alexa, it hits everything. But the thing is, um, it also hits, uh, and they hit YouTube, and they do a very good job for me collecting the royalties back from all of the different streams and which which is that is one of my streams of income and because of how my music is getting out there um i get a weekly payback from them you know so my i get literally pretty much get a weekly check from cd baby every monday Good. you know and it and it varies and it varies and sometimes it's, it could be as a thousand dollars sometimes it could be 1500 sometimes it could be 500 you know but right. at the end of the day they're really good um tune core those i've heard they're very good but the the what i have heard about some of the others is this there's an annual fee attached to a lot of them and with the annual fee just say god forbid something happens to you you can't pay the fee they snatch your music off of everything yeah so no more legacy right well I'm glad you said it was CD Baby. I had a guy contact me. Uh, um, I, he, he paid me to do some sessions with him. And he's like, he called me up now. And he's like, he didn't realize, that, you know, he's not really that active in the music industry. But since, the, you know, the COVID-19, he's like, man, my music is all over everything. How I'm being ripped off. And I'm like, no, because when you released that CD with CD Baby 10 years ago, you signed a digital agreement. Right. So, and at least, like, I get a um I get a, a report anytime I want from Distro Kid. It's nice to hear that CD Baby does that. My situation, I I've, I've seen a lot of artists. I make most of my money through YouTube. So I try to funnel everybody to my YouTube channel and then I put my own music up on YouTube. That's my music and then uh I get the monetization from YouTube cuz when CD Baby puts it in the topic thing on YouTube and they get all the money. They give you a percentage, but anyway. Right. Um This is true, right? Uh, you know, my, I've done better with, uh, with YouTube than I've ever done with BMI on all from Harry Fox collecting all of my stuff through the years. It's been, you know, even, um, commercial, uh, you know, commercials and voiceovers. I'm finding YouTube to be really good and the reports are really honest. You know what I'm saying? Um, so anyway, I just wanted to find out how other people are, are, are weathering the storm. I like the, I do like, like I said, CD Baby, I've been using CD Baby for years, and um, CD Baby has been really, really good to me. Now, uh, and since we're on the topic, uh, what I will suggest is this, uh, because I have been blessed, fortunate to have my music put on, on major platforms, for instance, uh, Sirius XM. Right. So, uh, I have uh, my label because because of uh, I just negotiated a deal and um with my deal I have a deal with Sirius XM which basically I have a direct licensing agreement with them so basically um uh, most times when you get on major major platforms you need to have a, a mediator in between a third party uh, a radio promoter right uh, you pay the radio promoter x amount of dollars their job is to take your music from this hand and put it out here towards the masses. Okay. Well, um, because Sirius XM is one of the uh, larger payouts, uh, and because of our relationship, uh, I have a direct licensing deal with them. Now, my radio promoter is still important for the sake of 
getting it out to different people and also my billboard placement because Sirius XM, that's just between us. But the thing is, even though it might pay more money, it's not going to put me in position for billboard charting because I need these other guys still, which still shows a need for my radio promoter. Well, with that being said, all of the royalties are paid through sound exchange. Okay. Right? Yeah. All right. So if you don't have sound exchange, I will tell any, all of you get sound exchange. Okay. The deal is, um, what I do not recommend is you have to be careful when you do uh, your distro distributions through CD Baby, TuneCore, and all of them. There is, they automatically provide sound exchange collection with all of them distributors. Now, what, I, what happened to me was, and I don't want this to happen to anyone, when I put out one of my albums, I went through and I saw everything and I saw Sound Exchange was like, oh, okay, it's not a big deal. You know, every, one place, one stop shop, collect all the money, you know, and that's it and distribute. Well, come to find out, Sound Exchange, uh, they can distribute the money themselves to you for what they collect. What CD Baby was doing, and all of them do this, what CD Baby was doing was CD Baby was collecting it taking a percentage from the sound exchange, which they, which basically if I, uh, and I had to get them out of the way so I could start collecting directly for them. So basically they, they just kind of checked it. So one thing you want to be very careful of is that when you do those distribution deals, make sure you go through and make sure that they are not collecting your sound exchange. Gotcha. Do not let them do that. Because the thing is, they don't have to do it. You can get your money directly from Sound Exchange. So I've got a new album um, uh, that, that I'm putting out. And, and like Steve Van Zant, um, uh, he's got the garage on Sirius. He likes me. He likes one of the songs. He's heard a little bit. You know, he plays with Springs, whatever. He's got his right. own show. He'll play me on his garage show. Is it better for me to when um, I'm ready to, to, to put the whole album out, just go through Sound Exchange and not go through DistroKid? To, you know, because... Yeah, because distro kit is gonna put it this way, you're gonna be paying double on the collection. Right. Yeah, you're paying double on the collection. What, what, what I love so basically what happens. If you, so, just let me say it this way if you have 100% of royalty, yeah, and if you this is sound exchange, this is distro, this is you, so you got 100% of royalty, they take 10%, they take 10%, and then you get the 80 when necessarily you can get a higher percentage if you just tell distro don't touch it. They don't have to touch it. Yeah. They're going to sell it as a, a, a benefit, you know, hey, you don't worry about it. But the thing is, you're giving away money when you don't have to. Right. You know, and you can get the higher. And also another thing is when you do your sound exchange, another thing that's very important that a lot of artists do not do. Um, I would say this, if you, you need to make sure that you sign up with them as a copyright owner, make sure they know that you are the owner of the copyright. Because what happens is, is that the way the percentages are broken out is this, out of 100%, uh, sound exchange takes 5%. All right, 95% of the royalty is yours. How actually, but 45% is artists and the other 50% uh, is label and copyright owner. Most artists are only getting 45% of the royalty because they never listed themselves as a copyright owner. You have to list, definitely list yourself as that. Well, yeah, you I have to do the that. ISBDN number the, um, uh, to get the, um, to, that code so everybody, so we, we can trace it. You need to have, you have to be through the Library of Congress and have the publishing company, right? Not necessarily. And let me tell you, not necessarily what, what sound exchange. They, see, the idea of this, copyright ownership, uh, okay, let me, let me say it this way. I, I did a um, tribute album. Uh, this is the album that Rebecca is on. I'm doing a tribute album to Stevie Wonder, Donny Hathaway and um, George Duke. Okay, so when I was getting the licensing done, um, I contacted uh, 
sound exchanger was like, okay, I need to register the song. I did, basically I did the same arrangement. Uh, and what do I need to do? I know I'm probably not gonna get no money. They stopped me in my tracks and was like, who produced the song? I was like, uh, the Steve, no, no. They was like, did Stevie want to produce your, your version? I was like, no. They was like, he has nothing to do with our agreement. This royalty is a performer's agreement. Right. So in the addition, because I produced it, the particular, that 95% still comes to me. Okay. The publisher side, the writer's agreement, for instance, the ASCAP, BMI, CSACs, so you got the, 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 the uh, publishing and the writers, that portion goes to Stevie, that portion goes to the Sheila E's and all of them. Right. But the sound exchange, you still get 95% of that because you are the quote unquote creator of that particular song that you're marketing. So you have to make sure when you register with sound exchange, you are not just registered as an artist. You have to be registered cool. as the copyright owner, label, such and such. So you can make sure you get the full 95%. Now, to add on to that is this. If you haven't done it, chances are, like some friends of ours, uh, my, actually, guys, my music director is on here, uh, Darius Jamar. He's actually an artist himself. Uh, but we have a mutual friend. And the mutual friend that we have he did a search because he did not list himself as a copyright owner. When he did the search, after he listed himself, came to find out dude had damn near five, six thousand dollars just sitting out there waiting for him. Well, yeah. So the thing is, if you do it, then go back and search your name because you might have money just sitting there waiting. 